Hey there, boys and girls. Mr. McCauley here. I'm going to give you a presentation that's based on the movies, uh, the Habitat movies that are listed in Google Classroom, either the Way Cool Science one or the Real World Science videos, both on Habitats. Both movies are very similar, and they talk about different types of habitats. In fact, they talk about six different types of habitats. So here we go. So first of all, let's define a habitat. A habitat is any natural home for an animal, a plant, or an organism. And habitats provide certain things for the animals that live there. They give them food, water, air, of course, and space. Now within that space, what do they get within the space? Typically they need some kind of shelter. They need to be protected maybe from prey um, or maybe from bad weather. Okay, here's a diagram that I've made, and it features the world, and uh, I've tried to kind of list the temperature in different spots. The very top of the world, where the pole is, is, of course, very, very cold. Then you've got a distance underneath there where the tundra is, is very cold. Then you've got areas where, where it's just coniferous forest, that would be cold. Where we live is kind of warm. And of course, very far south of us in the middle of the earth would be hot. Now I'm going to use this kind of uh, gauge of temperature to talk about the different regions that you would find from the pole down to the middle of the earth. I'm going to draw them as um, ovals, but in real life, uh, they don't really look like ovals. But you'll get the idea once I finish this little demonstration. Okay, so let's talk about the polar region. It's at the north of the very north and south of the, um, the world, and it is very, very cold. There are no plants that can grow in the polar regions, but there are animals that live there. Underneath the polar region, it is very cold, and that is where we find the tundra. The tundra is a spot that is mostly frozen. However, they have a very short kind of summer months where it's always sunny, and uh, that's the chance for some plants to grow. Um, but it's still a very cold, and the land is frozen normally there. They call that the permafrost because it's permanently frozen. Underneath the tundra, it is still cold, and it's so cold that only one type of tree can grow there, and we call that the coniferous tree. Those are trees that are evergreens, that have needles, thick needles that can withstand the cold. Now, of course, again, here I've drawn different ovals to represent the different regions. The map, of course, is not a perfect oval. Uh, the map of these regions would be more uh, specifically drawn, but this is just to give you an example of how the different regions interact with the temperatures. Where we live, it's kind of temperate. It's warm. We have four seasons. Because we have four seasons, uh, trees, we get a variety of trees. We do get some coniferous evergreen trees, but we also get trees like maple trees and oak trees and all those other uh, regular trees. And those trees in the fall give up their um, leaves and drop their leaves in the fall and start again in the spring. And of course, underneath that is the last forest, the third forest, the rainforest, which happens in very warm regions. And of course, it's very wet and humid, and plants and animals grow very quickly in that region. So this is kind of a bit of a symbolic map of what it would be like if you walked from the top of the polar region down to the middle of the earth. Habitat number one, let's talk about water. There are two types of water habitats. One is fresh water. Fresh water gets all their water from rain and snow runoff. And there's salt water, which is the oceans. Both, of course, are very wet. They're rich in nutrients and animals and plants. And they're very diverse. There's a whole bunch of different plants and animals that live in both regions. Here's fresh water. You can imagine the rain or the snow coming from the mountains and coming down and filling up this lake. So fresh water uh, is lakes, ponds, swamps, rivers, streams, but not the seas or the oceans. Here's another example of a picture where you've got a lot of fish eating, uh, feeding in this lake. The, fresh, the water cycle starts off with 
water evaporating. That could be a lake water evaporating or the ocean water evaporating. Now the interesting thing is that when the ocean water evaporates, the salt does not come along for the ride. And then we have the uh, water going up into form clouds. Eventually those clouds get so heavy with water that you get the precipitation and it drops the water in a variety of places but also on the land and those lakes and rivers get full up by either precipitation or from melting snow and eventually all the water from lakes and swamps and all that stuff goes running back out to the ocean and the cycle starts all over again. So that's how we get the fresh water on land. Now let's talk about salt water. Of course this is the oceans and the seas, right? There's a lot of different animals, some big predators like sharks live in uh, salt water in the ocean. But you've also got very small animals like plankton and phytoplankton and things like that. Very microscopic, tiny animals that are living in the ocean that really form the basics of the food chain in the ocean. Here's a very quick diagram. You have phytoplankton, which can make its own energy. You've got zooplankton that eat the phytoplankton. Then you've got small fish or baby fish that are eating that. And then eventually you've got larger fish that are eating those fish, and this is kind of a very simplified version of the food chain in the ocean. And now we're on to forests. There's three different types of forests. There's coniferous, temperate, and rainforest. In the coniferous region, it's very cold and rugged. Only coniferous trees grow, and that is what we call uh, evergreens, pine trees, spruce, and things like that. In the temperate region where we live, it's warm, it's seasonal. I wrote the word very natural then. And finally, we have the rainforest, which is very hot and humid. It's diverse, meaning there's a lot of different animals and insects and things like that, and it's very colorful. It's famous for the colorful birds and, and plants that live there. There's also, so here we are, this is what a coniferous forest could look like, mostly the evergreens growing there, and here's the actual map of where the coniferous uh, forest would be. Here's a coniferous forest in wintertime. Here's an example of what the leaves look like. Those green um, spikes are actually the leaves, and they have pine cones, or the cones are where the seeds are kept. Now we're in the temperate regions and we have the four seasons going on there. So this is what you would see like, I call this just a regular old forest that you would see in Ontario. You've got a variety of different things happening, a variety of trees. Here they are in the fall. Now we're in the warmer regions near the middle of the earth. We have the rainforests and the rainforests are very lush and humid and a variety of different animals that live in the rainforest. And here's a poster from animals in the rainforest. It also has the largest collection of insects as well in the world in the rainforest. Now we're into the desert. Deserts typically are very hot, but there are some Asian deserts that are cold. Desert, oh, actually that says desert, my, my bad. It should be desert, D-E-S-E-R-T, not desert, Mr. McCauley. Um, they're very hot, rugged. There's very limited resources there, meaning there's very little water that you're going to find in any desert. That's by definition, that's what a desert is. And so here's an adaptation. We have different cactus. Now, normally that cactus, juicy and full of liquid, needs to protect itself. So it's developed these kind of spikes so that hopefully no animals are going to try to eat it. There are different animals that live in the desert. A lot of them have adapted to the the dry climate, for example, the camel stores fat in its hump in case it, um, you know, it can use that as a source of liquid uh, and survive for two weeks. And for example, a little prairie dog on the left is living underground so that it's really hot on top, but at least it's a little cooler where that guy lives. Now we've got the grasslands. Uh, the grasslands are in areas of the world that typically are very flat, like the plains, the great, uh, the great uh, plains in Africa uh, and also in the middle of the United States. So here's where we would see the uh, grasslands. Usually there's very little cover, very, usually very few trees, and you've got animals that are moving from spot to spot looking for food. You need, you need a bit of a survival strategy in the grasslands. Because there's no cover, it's hard to hide. You have to either maybe burrow, which means dig underground, 
are you got to be fast, maybe you're a fast runner, or you have to be maybe fierce and tough like a rhino in Africa. Uh, uh, often you're going to maybe have some camouflage to blend in, and some animals are very social, that they might travel in a pack hunting for food. And here's some examples of some animals that you would see on the grasslands. Tundra. We talked about tundra quickly. Tundra, there's no trees, not even evergreens. Um, but there are some plants that do come in the very short summer that is there. It's very barren and cold there. It's not quite in the polar region, but we're almost there. So here are some different animals. A lot of these animals will change color in the winter time to changing to the sh from the springtime. So we've got an Arctic hare, and it turns a browner color in spring in the summertime. We have an Arctic fox. It turns a bit of a brown color in the springtime, so it'll blend in with uh, uh, the changing background. We've got a musk ox there and a caribou. Here's what the tundra looks like in spring. It's summertime, springtime, and again, I would call it very barren, cold, and harsh, and there's no trees. Now we are at the very top and the bottom of the world where it's very, very cold, very harsh, very rugged, very unforgiving. Uh, you know, if you make a mistake in the polar regions, uh, you quickly could die because of the, the, how cold it is. And so the animals that do live there have adapted themselves to live in very cold regions, such as uh, penguins, the polar bears here, and the, here's a walrus. And that's it. Those are the six regions, the six regions, uh, different, six different habitats in the world. Hope that's helpful. Talk to you later. Bye bye.